There is an all new handheld gaming device, the Lenovo Legion Go. And I think this is the best of the bunch. And I say that because this is the first handheld gaming product that could actually play first person shooters well. Like you can be competitive in shooters on this device. And I think that alone makes this product so much better than anything else that's been on the market before. Like if you think about the way that handheld gaming products are perceived, it's usually for like a more casual crowd. And even if you're not a casual gamer and you pick up a handheld device, usually you're playing more casual games because shooters just don't fly on a product like this. We're using thumbsticks and D-pads. Like it's just, it's a little different, but this thing, it's got a trick up its sleeve. So first of all, let's talk about the hardware. When you look at this product, I think the first thing that you'll notice is that it has what seems to be a detachable set of controllers and they actually are. So I'm just gonna punch in a little bit here. This has a switch-like controller experience. And I say switch like only in mechanism, not in functionality. So to uh, to remove these things, it's a button on the back. It's kind of like uh, you, you depress it, like you push it in and you slide it down. It is very unlike a switch in the sense that switches like work on a rail system. This is not that. It's like you press it, you slide it down. And once it's off, you have these two separate controllers, which are loose like that. And check this out. It has a built-in kickstand, which I think looks, I mean, it looks awesome, right? You can have your gaming setup, you got your controls, and then to piece them back together, you just clip them on. They go in right on the side, they slide up a little bit, and then they connect. Uh, it's remarkably easy to do, but it's not exactly like how a switch works. Now, in terms of the hardware itself, this product, like I'm just gonna focus on the kind of base uh, like the base unit first. This is plastic. At first in like some of the leaked photos, I thought this was like a metal device. It's not, it's a well-made Legion caliber plastic device. It's like very solid. And there's venting back here for the airflow. Uh, obviously if your kickstand and underneath the kickstand, it's just a sticker with the model number and serial number and whatnot. But you can actually take a look at the hinge here. It's actually pretty neat. This is on like a rail. It like slides along the rail and it just seems really well-made. Like this seems like a very tanky, smartly designed hinge, way better than the stuff on the Nintendo Switch and way better than the non-existent one on the Steam Deck. Now the size of the Legion Go is quite big. This is running a large 8.8 .8 inch display. It's a lot bigger than the display that's on the Steam Deck, which is running a seven inch display. Um, because it's a larger display, it's like a larger product and a slightly heavier product. But when you hold these devices, the Steam Deck has this very ergonomic feel to it. Every time I pick one of these things up, it just feels natural. It's a bigger device, but it feels naturally like fitted to a hand. This product, I feel like is just at the cusp of it. It still feels very comfortable, but there's something about the way that this interacts with the, the positioning of your hands. It just feels chunkier than I expected. And I think it's just because it's a large device. It's bigger than the Steam Deck and it's a lot bigger than the RG Ally. And this feels by comparison, like very svelte and small, but it is not as comfortable to hold because the grips just, they don't have that ergonomic feel to it. When you have big grips like this that like extend out the bottom and flare out, it's just like a nice kind of, it's a good feel. And the Steam Deck and the Legion Go have it, Ally doesn't quite. Now in terms of the controllers themselves, I spent a little over a week with them and there's a lot to talk about. So let's start off with the stuff I do like. Uh, the sticks use hall sensors. So these use magnets to determine the position of the stick instead of the traditional potentiometer. And the idea is that when you have magnets that do a readout with the kind of magnetic strength, depending on the positioning, you don't get stick drift, or at least it's a lot rarer. Uh, another thing I really like is the touchpad. Actually, you know what? I should just detach these things so you can see what's up. Bring it right up to the camera. So there is a touchpad that's right. Uh, it's in a weird spot visually. Like when you look at it, you're like, hey, why is the trackpad not centered? But it's actually perfect. Like when you're actually holding it, I should reattach it back. But when you have it in position, it's like this nice spot to have that trackpad. It's like, you know, the movement of it is perfect. But then visually it's a little bit strange. Uh, but one thing I wanna draw your attention to real quick, this controller, even though it attaches in a switch-like manner, is not meant to be used as like a, a controller for another player. Like if you removed both of these controls, it would seem like you should be able to just have two separate controllers, right? Kind of like a switch, but they're so not meant for that. If, like this is what the right controller looks like. I mean, maybe they could implement some software for some really bad controls in a game. Uh, and same thing with the left controller. I'm sure in theory, 
with some software you could do it, but it's just not, it's not meant for that. Uh, so the question is, why detach them, right? And so when I first interact with this thing, I want to figure it out. I sat there puzzled, like what on earth is the purpose of having two controllers that detach that don't even do anything when they're detached? They can't be used. And at first I was like, is it some kind of VR thing? Can they be used as some kind of like VR control? It's not that. Let me show you. Oh, you know what? This is a perfect time to introduce the box to you. I feel like I'm showing you too many things at once. Uh, this is the box. It comes with this thing, which we'll come back to in a second, but it's very similar to the switch box in the sense that there's like cutouts and stuff. Um, not cutouts, but like molds for where the stuff goes. So this is it in, closes up. Actually, something that's neat, there is a little cutout for the charging port. We'll come to the, we'll get to the ports in a second, but there's a little hole so you can plug up your, your charging, your USB-C charging into it while it's in its case which is kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, that's the case. And also there's a little dimpled cutout at the bottom of this thing that I asked them. And like, apparently you can stick the tops of the sticks, like the joysticks. These things pop off. I'll just do it real quick. It's a little bit stiff, but uh, they pop off and you can get spares, I guess, or then maybe there might be some that comes with the retail package, but that fits in there. Maybe for different kinds of uh, tops, if you have like different needs for different materials that you want for it. But back to the controls. So this thing came in the box and I was like, what does that do? So check this out. Check this out. When you detach these things and you have your, your little product there, this thing, the right controller has a switch on the bottom. Actually, I'll bring it right up to the thing. It's got a switch on the bottom that says, off on one side and then FPS on the other side. So normally you would have it in the off position. And when it's there, it just works as the regular right controller and the touchpad works in a kind of very touchpad manner. You can see me wiggling around the back there. But when you put it into the FPS position, it drops into that thing. Now, uh, it becomes this like strangely functional vertical mouse. And look at that now. <laughs> Now it's a mouse and I'm moving it around like a regular mouse. And at first it is very weird. When I first connected it up, I was like, what am I looking at? Like, how am I even supposed to use this? But you pick it up, you start moving it around and within like 30 seconds, it just makes sense. You're just like, okay, I, I, think, I, I think I get how this works. And when I use this now, like I've been using this for a week at this point, so I'm like very comfortable with it. I, I actually think I could maintain master's rank in Overwatch on this mouse. It would be tough. I'm not gonna say that this is as good as a regular mouse, but it's very, very good. And the fact that this comes built into the system, like with this little mouse holder thing, but the fact that it's built into this product that was originally a handheld, right? This didn't come, you, when you first saw this, you did not even recognize that this was a mouse. It's a freaking mouse that's connected to this handheld system. It is wild. And then the left controller, it's like your W, oh, I was like, what is going on? Uh, it's missing its little knob. I should put this back on. but you use the controller like a WASD and the, sorry, use the left controller as WASD and then you use the right controller as your mouse. And it just works. All right, so this is just the training room in Overwatch 2. And using the left controller, you can move around just like you would with your WASD key. So you have your forwards, backwards, strafe, left and right. And this is very fluid. This works the way that you would expect it to. But then the right controller has been turned into this mouse-like thing. And you have your, your left mouse click, you got your right mouse click, you have the movement exactly the way that you'd expect it to. It is so strange how good this works with pre-production hardware. I can't stress that enough. Like this product was just announced and I was fortunate to be able to have early access to it, but don't look at any of this with like, you know, this is the final production version. It so isn't. I was actually told that there's supposed to be some magnet system so that when you connect the right controller into this little dock thing or the holder thing, that it'll just hold it more securely because right now it's loose and sometimes it can just pop off a little more, a little easily, but it, it just works so well. And the fact that all of this is built into a controller system is wild. Now I do wish the controllers would connect together. Like I wish there was some kind of mechanism or some kind of bracket that the left and right modules would be able to just click in and then you could play like almost like a regular console. 
uh, but there isn't anything like that quite yet. The LED rings around the sticks, those can be changed color with future software. Uh, the buttons on the right. So actually, when, I need to mention this. These buttons and all the controls and whatever on the right controller are deactivated when it's in FPS mode. So this will only work as like the mouse thing when it's in uh, FPS mode. But then to switch it back to regular control mode so that the buttons and stuff work, you got to switch it over to off, like the off position. And then now it becomes, well, it can become, if you give it a second, Okay, there we go. It took a while, but that's the software, right? It kicks in and then now you can use it like a regular uh, pair of sticks. Um, yeah, so they don't connect. The other thing I don't love are the actual D-pad buttons. So the buttons themselves on the right, these feel great. I think they're very like, if I had to describe what they're most similar to, it's like an Xbox style. Uh, these work fine. The D-pad, however, is not my favorite. So this has a very audible click when you click the different positions, like. And for one, it's a little bit noisy, but I also don't like that mechanism for the games that I play. So if I play Street Fighter VI with this thing, it doesn't feel great. I feel like a lot of the combos just don't connect the way that I'm used to using this D-pad. Uh, but I think it's just a very subjective, preferential thing. Some people like these D-pads, I personally don't. I like my D-pads, like the silent, kind of smoother mechanism, like the stuff that you see on the Steam Deck. These D-pads are a little more forgiving. They're just a little bit softer. They're still tactile, but they're not like super loud in that sense. Uh, same with the Ally, like this has a, uh, it's got like that circular Xbox style. But yeah, the one on the Legion Go, this is definitely more clicky and just like a stiffer feeling kind of D-pad. Now in terms of the ergonomics, when this thing's all connected up, it's comfortable to hold in your hand but there is something about the buttons on the back that feel a little bit strange. So if you look at the, I'm gonna flip this around, but it's gonna be opposite, right? So this is being held by my left hand and this would be held by my right hand because this is upside down right now. But if you'll notice these two buttons here, so the, um, like the back buttons, these are similar to what you'd expect any kind of handheld console's back buttons to be, which is great, like the ones on the left, but on the right hand side, these are just in a weird spot. And I'm not sure if they had to do it like this because of the mouse buttons and the way they wanted to be able to be clicked when it's in mouse mode, but these don't feel great. Like when I'm in my right hand, it's like you kind of have to hit them with the inner part of your knuckles instead of the kind of regular two-fingered positioning you see on the left-hand side. Uh, but the controls otherwise are pretty nice. I did just notice that they had a software update and now the, the colors can be changed at least a certain degree. I'm sure the retail version of this is gonna be much more advanced. I do wanna talk about the stick tops, like the grips of these. These are a hard plastic. Now, I've used a bunch of different handheld devices where these are all just made of different materials and everyone has a different opinion on them. I don't like the hard plastic. I wish these things were just like a softer rubber. I know those wear out pretty quick, but yeah, this doesn't feel as nice to me, but they do come off and you can obviously replace them and swap them out as you so see fit. Um, one other thing, I've noticed, having used this for a little bit, the thing that really defines this product, the feature that defines this entire product is actually the detachability of the left controller, specifically the left controller. Because if I could detach the left controller of a Steam Deck or an ROG Ally, I would be able to just connect up a Bluetooth mouse and just be able to play first person shooters on those devices as well, but I can't. And because the Legion Go can, you can do this, but it really is this left controller that makes it super special. And then the right controller is just a real sweet bonus, the fact that it can turn into a fully functional mouse. Now, in terms of accessories that Lenovo is offering, I don't think that there's some kind of dock that they're doing just because the kickstand is just so robust and it just allows you to put it into so many different positions. I think you can go like, I don't know, maybe 20 degrees. No, that's not 20, like 30 degrees flat. And then obviously, you can stand it upright if you want, but yeah, it goes down far back and it's very, very sturdy. I can't stress that enough. It's like, yeah, I really like this kickstand. It's well done. There is this one accessory that Lenovo is making that's pretty neat. So this is a pair of AR glasses and I've used a bunch of products like this before. Like they have the Rockids, uh, the Unreal glasses, and you just plug them up to like Steam Decks and Nintendo Switches, whatever you want. You just basically get a larger screen of the device projected right up to your face. Now, uh, I'm gonna look like a total derp with these things on, 
But right now, they're off right now, uh, so I can't see anything. But when you plug it up to the device, you get the screen. So I'm now seeing the screen of whatever's on the Legion Go projected in front of my face. Uh, and I would say that this pair of AR glasses is way more comfortable than the other stuff I've tried. I think it's because the material they're using, there's like a lot of rubber that's going on in here. Uh, they got like a rubber kind of like ear hook. This makes it really comfortable for like long-term wear and they have interchangeable nose pads. So this is something they're offering. I don't know the pricing of this thing at all. I don't know the pricing of any of this stuff at the filming at the time of filming this, unfortunately, but I feel like it's gonna be competitive to the Ally. It has to be. Now, in terms of the hardware inside, so this is running AMD's Z1 Extreme. So similar to the kind of performance you would see with the other high-end handheld from Asus, but this has faster RAM. So I would imagine the performance would be a little bit better. The screen resolution is also interesting. So this is a higher resolution screen. This is running a 2560 by 1600 display. And I should also mention that this software is also super beta, so don't uh, judge it by that. But when I first saw this resolution on the screen, I was like, okay, that can't be good because these devices that run a Z1 Extreme don't have an easy time powering a 1080p screen, let alone a higher resolution screen. But here's the magic of all of this. Because it's 1600, like because you can have that 1600 to 800, you can get integer scaling on the screen. So now when you downscale it to 1280 by 800, you get really nice, crisp pixelation of stuff. Uh, something that the ROG Ally cannot do very well. And so if you are playing a demanding game, let's say you're playing, I don't know, some AAA title, Cyberpunk, and you wanna have it with maximum frame rate, you would go to 1280 by 800 and you'd have nice, clean, crisp pixels and you get the best possible frame rate. But then if you wanna play some kind of emulation game or some kind of 2D title that's just not demanding at all, you can crank it back up to the 1600 resolution and now you have the best of both worlds. And that is so smart. Uh, I, at first, like my first reaction was like, oh my God, that's too many pixels. How are they gonna power it? But it allows you that flexibility, which is what I think they're actually trying to go for. Now, in terms of my overall thoughts on this product, it's very early, right? It's early hardware, very early software, but I feel like they're on they're onto something really cool here. So my my overall take is that this is the first gaming handheld that really felt like it was built for gaming enthusiasts to take advantage of. Like obviously there's a lot of cool hardware out there, very powerful hardware out there, but because you can't play shooters, like first person shooters on any handheld gaming platform properly, and this thing can, like the reality is you're missing out on like 50% of the gaming library out there. If you can't play shooters well on a handheld, you just, right? You, you This thing can, this has access to every single game out there. It's really cool. And because of that, it's just like, it's so awesome. Um, one thing, there's two USB-C ports. There's one on the top, one on the bottom, as well as the SD card there and the volume control. Now the bottom SD card slot, I found that when it was in kickstand mode, like it's kind of right at the front of the device at the bottom. And when you have it in a kickstand position, it's actually a little bit difficult sometimes to plug stuff up into that bottom one just because of the angle of the angle of that kickstand. It just depends on how steep you have it. But yeah, otherwise pretty banging. The battery is 49.2 watt hours. So about 15, maybe 20% bigger than the battery on the Ally. Uh, you know what? Let's pop it open. I haven't seen it yet. Let's take a look. So I removed the six visible screws and the back plate just didn't come off. I, so I got like a pry tool. It's a lot more difficult to access than the Steam Deck and the Ally for sure. Unless again, this is just the, okay, it's coming off. It's, it could just be the engineering sample, but you know, maybe they don't want me going in, but we going in boys. Okay, they, ooh, it's a black PCB. This is a lot cleaner looking than I thought it would be. Uh, single fan. SSDs over here. Okay, I don't see RAM. Like, I'm assuming the RAM was soldered on, but I don't even have visual access to it. And I think these are speakers on the top that are right behind the screen. The top of the screen? Yeah. But yeah, there you have it. Clean looking internals. I'll punch in there a little bit so you can see. And then the uh, back panel itself, it's pretty thick, like way thicker than I thought it'd be. Holy. Yeah, this is like straight up 
laptop materials turned into a very portable gaming handheld.